So far away, Lucas, are you ready to get Conley? God damn, yes. Can we get Conley together? Is that a thing? Yeah. We can also, if you want, the Bonely. The fact that he's going, we call him Bonely. <laughs> People wonder, you're right there. You should chill in the background. That's all we intro now. The Cones of Dunshire is a fictional game invented by the character Ben Wyatt in the show Parks and Rec during a moment which we feel is ever more relatable with each tick of the cosmic clock. A burst of creative output following a personal crisis that results in everybody around him being all like, yeah, you okay there, bud? <laughs> that's, that's, I think that's the most relatable thing about when he's like, hey, I invented this new game and everyone's like, sure you don't want to go back to work, Ben? Just when he shows off his stop motion animation, oh, he's but, like, oh, oh, God. I think it's really good. So just hang on to your hat, okay? <laughs> okay. Here he goes. Oh, how great. Did you pause it? No, 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 I'm not. You see... In my head, I thought that was really, really cool. In fact, I, I, I emailed Leslie two days ago and I compared it to Avatar. It's, I think it's the, like just Rob Lowe. The only time his character ever drops that facade is like, <laughs> yeah, it's, is that all there is? And he's like, he just has that existential crisis. Like, this took me three days. It's like, where well, that moment when you realize, yes, that is all that it is. It's that like, is what no. stop motion in, yes. But uh, to end the intro, um, but to end my intro, the Cones of Dunshire also ended up being real, thanks to Settlers of Catan. So first things first, Luke, as I open up my coffee, what do you know about some Parks and Rec? Um, I mean, I've watched Parks and Rec a couple of times through. Mm. Um, It's definitely, I think, like, one of the better uh, sitcoms, you know, the past, like, 20 years or so, and I think exemplified by the fact that its ending is just, like, done so well. It just gives a nice, gratifying wrap-up to every single person's story. Yeah, like, the final episode of Parks and Rec is just one of those, like, just finales that you look at and go, if every sitcom and every show got an ending like this, we'd be okay. Yeah, for sure. Like, even side characters like get mentioned in that final episode, including ones that aren't actually pictured on screen. Like, do you know where, like, um, it's Typhoon? And it's in the future. Oh yeah, and, like, of Typhoon course, yeah. and Craig are married, and they're there. If you look at like the champagne they drink in that bit, it says like Jean Ralphio champagne. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like Jean Ralphio just like made champagne in that future. Typhoon, my love. Happy anniversary. Do you have any regrets? Uh, I think Jean Ralphio gets like one of the best send offs of just like faking his own death and running away. I, I, I think though, Jean Ralphio on my first watch through of that show is my least favourite character. And then on my mm. second watch through, he's like, actually, no, Jean Ralphio's great. <laughs> Even though honestly, she is the worst. She is the worst person in the world. Huge skank. Uh, to be fair as well, like Jean Ralphio and his sister. Oh, like, yeah, they're both fantastic. Like, Sapper Steve. Just, uh, just some of the lines that he has of, like, well, I got on one of the old fashioned way. I got hit by a Lexus. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> oh, but um, the specific topic of today's video is the game The Cones of Dunshire, which, as mentioned, is created by the character Ben Wyatt during, like, a period of, like, his life that I think, as we've gotten older, Lucas, we can like better relate to which is just feeling despondent at where your life's going and just having this burst of creative energy that results in you making something i mean we all lived through the pandemic right so yeah you know have... lock lockdown was that moment for many people where it's like oh no four seconds of stop motion anime like he's sat there he ain't got a job he's depressed and he's like you know what I'm going to express myself creatively. Oh, God, I suck at this. <laughs> it's like that moment when you realize that you're not amazing at something after your first try. It's like, why? I had a week off in between jobs, and I've been cooking up something pretty big. The last time he was in between jobs, he got deep into claymation. So this should be different, hopefully. He's like, you know what? Just fuck this. I want to go back to work in an office. But, yeah, it's like the game features very sporadically throughout Parks and Rec, but 
When it does, I think it's one of the highlights of the show. Yes. I said, and have you ever heard the reason why like Combs have done Shia kept coming back? Uh, no, I haven't, no. It's because the set dresser was told, uh, in this episode, Ben's going to make a board game. It's like ridiculously convoluted. Uh, we need you to make a prop for that. And the prop they made was so expansive and so ridiculous that they felt bad about only using it for one episode, so they kept it and kept bringing it back. <laughs> the Cones of Dunshire, a brand new gaming experience. Eight to 12 players, two wizards, a maverick, the arbiter, two warriors, a corporal, and a ledgerman. Now, the ledgerman just keeps score. Oh, uh, I love stuff like that. Yeah, it's basically like the prop master just went above and beyond with what they were like, expecting. Like, we feel kind of bad only using it once. We feel even worse throwing it away afterwards. So they kept it and reused it for a couple of episodes where it would be um, uh, thematically appropriate. Like when he goes back to like, the accountant's office and he gives them the cones of Dunshire. <laughs> I knew it was too good to be true. <laughs> oh, I. Do you have a little going away gift? Left it in the break room. If anyone could appreciate it, it's you guys. You can play with one warrior, but it's just not nearly as good. Enjoy Ben Wyatt. Let's play. I call it Jimmy. And just, you know, shout out to that accountant for obviously their gift to Ben, even though he constantly just fucks them over. They're like, mm -hmm. here's a gift. We've, we've put the copyright for it in your name. This is the copyright to Cones of Dunshire. After you gave it to us as a gift, we saw its potential, so we formed a C-Corp and registered it in your name. This is amazing. And just, you know, you mentioned the finale to the series earlier. Um, I love that they mentioned, yeah, the Cones of Dunshire got a sequel. It was voted, like, one of the most difficult games to understand by, like, <laughs> Board Gamers Monthly. <laughs> oh. And, like, like and what... Oh, and what is your favourite part of the Cones of Dunshire? And why is it that just... Uh, and what's your favourite part of Cones of Dunshire? And why is it the part where Ben just throws, like, 18 dice? <laughs> it's that See, bit I where he just, just goes... Huh? <laughs> it's just got to be, like, that reveal when he wins with, like, the little lonely farmer. It's like, you forgot about the Cones. <laughs> <laughs> the essence of the game. It's about the Cones! <laughs> You forgot about the essence of the game. It's about the cones. Oh, uh, like such a good payoff in that Grizzle episode. Yeah, and um, just like, as I said, the only reason it got brought back is because the prop master just made this ridiculous prop for that one episode that it's supposed to appear and they felt bad, so they you know expanded upon it briefly. But um, And while it would appear that they just grabbed a bunch of random crap and piled it all on the table, um, to create those scenes, like there is some, and I'm, you know the word "some" is doing a lot of heavy lifting here. Some internal consistency in how the game looks and plays in its sporadic appearances on the show, and that's because okay. they had the same prop for most of it. And when they create that slightly more elaborate one for like the Grizzle Office, and they still had the original one that they could use as reference. They're playing Cones of Dunshire. Hey, you invented that game. Are they playing any games I invented? Are they throwing dirt into a fan? The key is you have to throw the dirt into the back of the fan. How the hell do they... I mean, I'm glad that there's, like, some level of consistency there. Yeah, not much. It's mostly in how it looks. Mm -hmm. And, like, obviously, there's no possible way that any game would use that many dice. <laughs> Although, <laughs> I've seen people who get really into role-playing games, and maybe they could do. I mean, yeah... Like, you know, obviously, I don't even think, like, D&D uses that level of amount of dice for one person, at least. Yeah, I, I still think it's well, one of my favourite just images online is, like, an image of a D1. And it's just a ping-pong ball <laughs> with one written on it. And it's like, fuck, of course that exists! <laughs> just roll your D1. Oh, just the God. ball. <sighs> oh, man. So you said it was, like, just the prop masters that made it? Yes, but they did have some help from a company called Mayfair. And that name might be familiar to some people watching out there because Mayfair make the game Settlers of Catan, which is also name dropped on the show. Yes, because when they um they do like the night of bachelor parties and mm -hmm. that, it's like, Well, Ben, what do you want to do? We'll do anything you would like. It's your night and they like I want to play Settlers of Catan and they're like, man, this is this is boring, let's go do something else. Seven contiguous segments giving me longest road and a sweet ass ten points for the win. A booyah! Yeah, and he says, like, I have to warn you, I'm nationally ranked. Oh yeah. 
because he's like a huge nerd. So like Settlers of Kang gets name dropped in a couple of episodes. Something people maybe don't know about television and movies when you want to name drop a brand is that generally you have to ask for permission. Now, there's no mm -hmm. rule that says you have to, but if the brand in question um, doesn't like the way their brand is being portrayed in your show, they can ask you to remove it. So it's yeah. common practice to just ask the brand for permission. And a lot of times um, they will say yes and usually send you free stuff. And one of the companies that's most famous or infamous for this, depending on how much you personally like their products, is Apple. Uh, because that company spends millions every year sending the productions of TV shows just free iPads and iPhones mm. and um, MacBooks and stuff so they can use them as props. Just so, you know, it's eyes on, every, on, on all the products, doesn't it? You know? Yeah, that's what I mean. It pays for itself. And I think one of the best examples of that is the show Modern Family. You watch Modern Family? Uh, most of it, yeah. yeah there, have you seen that episode that's set entirely on the MacBook screen? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, there's an yeah. entire episode of that show that is filmed on a MacBook screen where it's just them talking on FaceTime and stuff like that. Honey, have you been playing your new little video game all day? When you say it in that tone, it implies that Luke and I haven't been spending quality time together, which we have. Can I talk to him? Sure thing. Luke! I don't think he's here. I mean, I, I know he's not here. Where is he? I am certain he is probably out with his usual crew of cut-ups. You're not doing laundry, are you? God, no. And mm -hmm. that episode was not paid for by Apple. Like it's a lot of people assume that episode was like paid sponsorship, but it's no. Just we asked Apple for permission to use their products, but they didn't pay us to do it. But we did have a lot of Apple products lying around because Apple sent them. It's that very strange thing, isn't it? Of like in those kind of scenarios, I could see Modern Family having to pay Apple, but I could also see Apple paying Modern Family for the appearance and like the marketing. Mm-hmm. And it's um, you know a mixture of both, where it's Apple provided the products free of charge and allowed Modern Family to use them mm -hmm. and like use their branding and their names and their iconography and all that good stuff. And in return, the cast of Modern Family all got free iPhones and used them constantly, and yep. therefore showed and marketed the product for Apple. It's a very common thing in a lot of movies and TV shows. And for the most part, no money changes hands with these deals. It's more like, you know, a quid pro quo thing. Mm. But when money does change hands, you can usually always tell. And the reason you can usually always tell is because it's almost always Sony. RD, pick up a phone. I don't oh. care if Johnny said it's a cool app. Johnny's still new here. Now, Porridge Head, did you call a hearse for the Gremlin Birds? Now, I don't know about you, Lucas, but does it draw you out of a TV show or a film? when like the main character whips out their Sony Vio laptop. Not only the Sony Vio laptop, but the Sony Vio laptop that keeps uploading vital information while our plane crashes a caring car. <laughs> to Bing, via Bing, <laughs> don't forget that. Oh, God, like, Amazing Spider-Man just fucking went hard. And bringing it back to Parks and Rec, it was a similar deal with Mayfair, where they, mm. they didn't object to them using the Settles of Catan name, provide them you know, a, free, a few free board games, and even create some of the props for the Cones of Dunshire um, uh, game. Oh, cool. I guess, like, maybe the figurines or something like that. Yeah, like, they, like, furnished um, uh, the Prop Master with a bunch of stuff that would help them create, like, you know, this incredibly convoluted game that's, like, sprung from the mind of... Like a self-admitted fan of their game because you look at so I've, I've not played much Settles of Catan but looking at you know the, the few screen appearances of Cones of Dunshire you can definitely see the influence there can't you? Yeah with all the tiles and stuff and like it makes sense because it just seems like Cones of Dunshire is the game that Ben Wyatt made because Settlers of Can was Catan wasn't complicated enough. Yeah, it's like those people who like make the Kaizo like Mario hacks, isn't it? Like yeah. Mario's not hard enough. I need to make harder Mario. It's basically what he's doing. Like, Ben Wyatt is like, Settlers of Catan isn't complicated enough. I need to add even more complexity to it. 
child's game, Carl. So they made like the props. They didn't make the full game, or they didn't make the full game because they furnished the props and like offered some advice on like you know lingo that could be used while like, you know playing the game. Uh, they started to receive a lot of requests to make a proper version. Oh, uh, of course, which is yeah. a basically impossible task because the show goes out of its way to make it out with this co ridiculously convoluted Gordian knot of, like, contradictory rules that no one but Ben Wyatt can understand. <laughs> <laughs> and I presume, like, it didn't even have a full rule set anyway. Um, and you are absolutely right, yes, but there was some internal consistency how it looked, and, mm -hmm. like, you know, the language that was used when it was being played in those few screen appearances that it had. And as a result, Mayfair found themselves in the impossible situation of making a game that was created on a fictional show as a joke. Like it took, and like, you know, not only like as a joke game, but a joke game that is overly convoluted and nobody would buy. Yes, but people wanted to buy it, and that's the weird thing. It's like it'd be, if they made a real version, it'd be so complicated, no one could play it. Mm. And you'd think because no one could play it, no one wants to buy it. But they had thousands of requests to make it from people who wanted to buy it. And I just find it really hilarious that the show itself goes out of its way to showcase the fact that no fucker understands this game. <laughs> Yeah, basically. It's basically impossible to understand. And then there's people, oh my, I want to play it though. The Cones of Denshire. Oh my god. The Maverick should be able to trade lumber for agriculture credits. How have I not thought of this before? This is nothing, right? Um, when do you go back to work again? Tomorrow. It's fine. I'll just throw this in the garbage. Oh god. That reminds me a little bit of like when Squid Game came out and there was that like real phone number in the show that people were calling oh, asking yes, to yes. play Squid Game. It's like, what about the show made anything <laughs> about this seem like something you want to do? Or something even possible to do. He's like, what about Parks and Rec made Cones of Dunshire look like a game anyone wants to play? <laughs> if I was at like a house party and someone whipped out the cones, like if they just started saying, let's play a game, and they start whipping out the cones, I'd be like, nah, I'm done. <laughs> I don't want to be here for another three days, thank it's you. It's like, have you ever been to a house party where someone whips out Risk? Oh, God. And you're like, like, fuck that. No, I'm not playing. You know, Risk is one of those games where, like, similar to Settlers of Catan, like, you all need to be in agreement that we are going to meet up to spend an entire day playing this thing. Yes. It's like, um, I've got a mate who had, like, I think it's Lord of the Rings Risk. So, oh, do you want to play? And I looked at it and went, I looked at my watch. I uh, looked at how much beer I'd left in the fridge and went, no, nah, I'm not doing this. Yeah, like, I've got that Lord of the Rings risk, but I wouldn't just pull it out and just assume, like, oh, yeah, should we all have a quick game of risk? Said There's no such thing. The only ever. quick game of risk is the game that you just end by flipping the fucking table. <laughs> <laughs> so as soon as someone picks Australia and just roll oh. and, like, I'm not evading every turn, it's like, well, I'm not fucking playing. And the fact that people looked at Cones of Dunshire... Which is like that taken to not even the logical extreme, like the most ridiculous extreme a writer could think of. The People illogical go, extreme, yeah. Oh dear. So they did make a real version, but they didn't make a real version to sell or something. Is that what happened there? And yeah, you're right. They did make a playable version, but according to Mayfair, it was a nightmare to try and strike a balance between creating a version that's true to the version we see on the show. Mm -hmm. but also was, you know, understandably enough for people to actually play without them making that, you know, the same face that Leslie Note makes whenever she sees it. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, that, that's great, Ben. You going back to work soon? <laughs> just, do you know, like that just like dead eyes stare? Yeah. <laughs> she does it just like, I, I love this I'm, man. I, I love you. I'm here to support you, but... um. Maybe this is not the one. Are you going to go back to work? So what they did is rather than create a version people could buy, they created a giant version and they had a one-off game at Gen Con 2014 for charity. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which I think is probably the only real way they could have done that. Because any real version would have just been a poor imitation of what you see on the show and any version that was true to what we saw on the show would have been like, you know, a novelty that no one actually played. It'd be one of those mm. things where people would have bought it and never played it. Yeah. So uh, their solution was, we're going to create a giant version, play at this convention once, and raffle off the ability to play um, uh, for charity. Please tell me that, like, it was so big that all of the figures had to be people. <laughs> One of those, like, living chess balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Well, for the, uh, when I do the edit, I'll try and find some pictures or um, maybe a video. Presumably someone who went to this convention filmed the thing, but it was, mm-hmm. uh, what, 2023 now? So that'd be... Nine now, years ago. Like nine years ago now. So, like, smartphones weren't exactly as good back then, but presumably there's footage somewhere or a photo I can track down with the appropriate credit given. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so um, in total... There were 33 people who joined with uh, one person taking the role of, like, you know, they got the little captain's hat. Because <laughs> I think that was the role that everyone wanted, of, like, they got of to course, wear the little yeah. captain's hat. <laughs> of course. And, uh, yep, yeah, they played and they raised a couple thousand dollars for charity. And as a result, there are about 30 people on planet Earth who can ever claim to have gotten Conley in the Counts of Dunshire. And the one thing I hope they also raffled off is the ability to knock over the central cone. <laughs> Do that big cone in the middle where the guy just pump. Do like a blind auction for charity so you can uh, raise the most amount of money to just be able to knock it over at the end. Yeah, because uh, that reminds me of an idea I've had for years now that I'm surprised isn't a thing. So do you want know when you go to a beach and you have yeah. those people make the really elaborate sand castles? Mm-hmm. And they'll make like you know a giant one, or they'll make like a, a a celebrity or something on a TV show, and they'll just sit there and people go and take pictures of it and selfies with it, and like you know mm-hmm. they um, give them money and stuff. I've always thought, why don't those guys who make those things wait till about one or two o'clock in the morning, and then stand up, get a megaphone out, and say, okay, who wants to give me a tenner to film themselves knocking it over? <laughs> And do, do I, just think, like, 1, 2 a.m., prime time mm-hmm. for people who are drunkenly walking back home or to the next club, how many of them will be willing to find, like, a tenner, 20, 30, 40 mm. quid, start a bidding war, to, like, run up and then on camera boot it over? Because <laughs> like, when you walk past it, how much do you just want to run up and jump inside and ruin it? You don't. That's true. But you're so tempted, like, but what if I did that? That little voice in the back of your head. Yeah, and if they sold off, like, you know, after, like, you know, there's, okay, families and stuff have gone, I'm probably going to go home now. Who wants to pay me a tenner to knock it over? Hmm. And I've always wondered why they don't do that. So if there's anyone out there who does stuff like that, or do you know, like street art, people make street art, I'd get a bucket yeah. of water and say, who wants to pay me a tenner to spill the bucket of water on it? Fair point. I've just always been surprised that that's not a thing. Because obviously, I've seen a lot of those street artists and stuff, and like most of the time they do create a new one every single day. Hmm. So why don't, and then they just usually wipe it up themselves, or just leave it to the elements. Like, no, man. Get some like you know, make some money from that. <laughs> but no, since we've been talking about board games though, do you have like a particular favourite board game? See, there's a board game that exists. Well, not a board game, a game mm-hmm. that exists in another TV show that I would really want to play. And what's that? Um, that is the game True American from New Girl. Okay, However, so I've not watched New Girl. Describe well, True American to me. True American is a drinking game where, like, they just show snippets over the night of them, like, shotgun and beers, screaming American, like, presidents at each other, um, playing, like, the floor is lava, like, just, you know, ridiculous random stuff. And the game has absolutely zero rules. They just filmed them trying to, like, look like they had rules and having a good time. Similar to what they did with Cones of Dunshire of... The game has a consistent look, but they never put any thought into the rules because they never expected it, one, to come back for a later episode, and two, to ever be a real thing people could play until people started asking to play it. My name is Eli Whitney, and I created the Cotton Gym. Exactly, and that's like one of the biggest you know, requests of the fans of New Girl is like, tell us what true American rules are. And there's like, we didn't make any rules. We just made it look like you want to play the game. Yeah. And that obviously people have then tried to figure out like what's an amalgamation of like fake rules and things that they did to try and make like a fan version of the rules. Or but, try and you know, break down the um, uh, like the scene in question. It's like, but when it was being written, there was no thought being given to any cohesion between these. It's kind of a joke. It's like, I, I struggle to think of a specific example, but it's something I see happening in a lot of shows of. Character will deliver a punchline to a joke you never hear. That makes no sense, and everyone bursts out laughing. Mm, yeah. Like, I can't think of any specific examples, but that happens so much in TV, doesn't it? Like, 
someone will deliver the you a character will walk in as a punchline's being delivered and everyone's like is in like uproarious laughter. It's like, oh, imagine what it's was like the that. joke? What was the joke? It's like there wasn't a joke. Yeah, it's like people like, oh, what did they say that was really funny? It's like they didn't say anything. The actors acting in a yeah. scene. Like this scenario did not exist until the camera turned on. Like they didn't <laughs> roll before and tell a joke. So uh, I know it's the um I think it's the show One Foot in the Grave, which um ends with spoilers for a twenty year old sitcom, the main character dying. Right. And the last episode ends with um uh, the wife of that guy meeting the person who killed the husband. And it ends with them giving them a cup of tea. And it's left okay. completely ambiguous whether or not they did something to that cup of tea. I think I'm remembering this correctly, but the actress mm-hmm. spoke for years afterwards that people kept asking her, so what happened? And she's like, <laughs> we didn't keep filming after the episode aired. Like, we didn't, like, you no, know, stop the episode and then film what happened next. I don't know. Well, it's similar to something we've talked about in the past, isn't it? Of, like, the ending of the thing. And it's yeah. like, there isn't an ending. It's ambiguous. That's the point of people. Yeah, I understand that. But what's the ending? It's like similar to this one, isn't it? What are the rules to Cones of Dunshire? Well, there aren't any rules. And then people watch it. Oh, he throws these dice and he talks about like the farmer and the cones. It's like, yeah, but that's because we, uh, we created language for it. And we want to keep the language consistent. But there's no like logic to the game as we created it. It's just a thing on a table. Like, <laughs> it's loosely tied up enough. To be able to edit it to make it look like it's a real thing. And that's about it. That's all that exists of it is just some loose threads here and there that make it yeah. look like they made a game. It's like what you saw on screen is all we've got, but people are in. There's got to be somewhere else, right? And I'm pretty, pretty sure that. that they made the entire game and actually spent an entire day at the Grizzle location really playing that game, Carl. Mm hmm. That was an actual game that they played for hours, right? What's something like maybe a director like Stanley Kubrick or Akira Kurosawa? Maybe they'd have done something like that. Maybe they would have invented an entire game. <laughs> and there are stories of things like that happening. Like um, uh, an example that springs to mind for me is the uh, I mentioned Kubrick. Do you know the all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy? Right, yeah. And they walk up to the script and she goes through the few pages and it's like, oh. And he's going insane. Like, Kubrick did have, like, an assistant type, all work and no play, makes Jack a dull boy, and fill that entire stack of paper. That was their job oh, for the weekend. Oh, right. Like, just that's one of those things, that, like, nowadays that's a nothing job. Because you just, like, you know, control C, control V, mm-hmm. and print it off a printer. Whereas, like, someone had to sit down on a typewriter and do yeah. that. Yeah, and Akira Kurosawa would also do something similar where, like, there's one film i forget which one it was but it's like people were drinking out of teacups and like they mm. bought teacups all these teacups look too new but yeah we just bought them they need to look like they've been used so what do you want us to do and the like you know the person probably regretted that question when akira kurosawa <laughs> told them i want you to make a thousand cups of tea out of it so that assistant spent all weekend making cups of tea pouring it into the cup what pouring the cup out pouring the tea into the cup pouring it out pouring it into the cup pouring it out Hundreds and hundreds of times. Until I understand the trying to, like, you know, age up a prop, but actually making a thousand cups of tea, like, god damn. Yeah, for realism. And I feel like a director like that maybe would have made the Combs of Dunshire into an actual game. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, but to my knowledge, like... um, uh, Stanley Kubrick doesn't direct Parks and Rec. No, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? It's too like, busy being dead. When it's a goddamn sitcom that they've got to churn like 22 episodes out of per year mm-hmm. they ain't making an entire game of cones of dungeon for real well, that's the thing they did or at least mayfair did and they created a version that was only played once by about 30 people i'm good for those guys i mean i'm jealous of those guys i am I, i'm like super jealous. it's one of those things like yeah so you're the only people on planet earth who can ever say they've played a full game except for like adam scott on the set of the show and even he didn't play a full game he just pretended to be the captain well, he's, still, he's still the architect, though. He is the architect. <laughs> I just love that, though, right, as well, when they show that picture, which I think is like an actual behind-the-scenes shot of like, oh, really? Adam Scott posing with the prop. Jokes, the prop was so <laughs> expensive. Like, so Johnny says, yeah, and I did make this game, like, and he's there like that. Yeah. And it's back from when the episode they made it. It's like, yeah, they took people took photos of it because it was like the prop was that good. Oh. It's like, yeah, the port, there's something special about porn, It's like, you're right. It's the home of the architect. (laughs) (laughs) What a great TV show. 